Good morning GIS 300. Today we are going to do a brief exercise with the uploading of geo-referenced images to ArcGIS online. You may work with your own geotag photos if you have them or I will supply a file of my own. Right click, properties and details, scroll down to where it says GPS and if it has a latitude and a longitude you are good to go. So we have a bunch of photos, that's a couple of grouse flying into the woods, there were no less than 15 there, I think it was two clutches hanging out together, a nice bumblebee, that's a pretty blurry shot, but it shows you what you need to see in terms of the banding for identification. So all of these do or should have coordinate locations attached. I'm clicking on the first one here, then holding down my shift key, going to the end, clicking on that. That selects everything. This is uh, white pine blister rust here, and a bridge that is getting some decay fungus as well. In any case, right click and send to compressed zipped folder. And this, when it's done, is what we're going to upload into ArcGIS Online. So, beginning here from your landing page, University of Maine at Fort Kent, go into your content tab and from the content add item. Add the item from your computer and choose file. We're going to go into the file where we just saved this. This was in week 10. Ignore all of the images and just go for the zipped file that holds all of these. Open. And then the contents you have to tell it it is a set of photos with locations. So photos with locations here. I'm going to give it a title, North Main Woods, demo and add tag demo it's got to have a tag or it will get mad add item and uploading time it'll take uh, a minute or so once that's done you can click open in map viewer here or here when that loads you can say done zoom out and it will show you all of your point locations so it looks like all of those are in Aroostook County. If I click on one, it will open up this dialog here. I can click on the image and it will show me where it is. So there's the truck at the very northernmost point that you can pull a truck over in the great and good state of Maine. If you don't believe me, we can hit zoom two and we can switch our base layer from our topographic to imagery and see that there is as far north as a person can go. And the funny thing, of course, is you drive all the way up here and then you look across the border and there's dogs barking, people talking, and you remember that the northern part of your country is the southern part of another. So let's go ahead and switch this base map back to topographic and we can left click on those three dots, zoom two, and that takes us all the way out for some reason. We can just scroll right back in here. And we can go ahead and click on any of those, look at the attachment, and there's a neat uh, concrete bridge. So I'm sure you can imagine all kinds of uses for this, from recreational, say you snapped a photo, you just thought you were going fishing, but oh well, you can now see what the water levels were on that day. You're down here, you snap a photo while you're working, and oh, that's the current state of regeneration one year or in the year of harvest here and this looks like a seed tree operation where they've harvested everything but the white pine with the intention of establishing a new generation of that same species. Over here, we're actually not in Aroostook County now. Let's go ahead and check that out. That's the bridge again. Very nice, newly installed. Don't usually see that kind. We'll see if we start seeing more of those. Let's try this, see what we have here. There's a stump. You can see a white pine stump here where you have fir and spruce growing on this site now. So this site used to grow pine and now grows spruce fir. Let's see what else we have. Fall color. We know the date of that fall color. We have that embedded in the image info. Here's another. Let's see. And there's a cool rock. But hey, if you knew a geologist and they were curious about that kind of rock, you could show them on the map where you found it and then they could tell you something about it. Let's have a look here. And mushrooms. But mushrooms are not putting out fruiting bodies like this all of the time. So now at this time, in this place, you know you had this kind of mushroom. Do I know what kind it is? No, but somebody would. And if I wanted to find out, I could show them this photo that would identify it for me. And then I could say in what place at what time. And then what have we here? We have a white pine killed by white pine blister rust by the looks of it. 
And it's good to know that that happened at that time in that place. What else? Here's one. There's our bumblebee again. So I can take this to a bumblebee export and say I saw this with orange, black, orange, then yellow and black again. I saw that at this time in this place. So part of the point of all this is that you don't always know what it is you're going to want to know about a spot later on. So maybe you want to know exactly how squashed that culvert is. You had time to snap a photo. You weren't there to measure culverts, but you were there, so you snapped a photo. And later on, you could stand in exactly the same place and snap another photo and see if it's changed. See if this rock is still where it was before, that kind of a thing. See if something has fallen off your truck. That would never happen. And then here's grouse one, grouse number two. I think there are at least a good 15 others in that spot. So a whole bunch of not very smart birds at that place in that time. So my practice and my suggestion to you is to have your geolocation turned on on your phone, as creepy as that might be under normal civilized circumstances. When you're working in the woods, photograph everything. You can never have too many good points of reference in a place at a time. And with any modern GIS, whether that's QGIS or ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Pro, there's a quick way of getting those photos from being files on your computer into points on a map.